It's been known for decades that the DNA absorbs and emits light. So let's ask the big question. What if the DNA is actually an optical quantum computer? To answer that question, we will first have to figure out how data could be stored in the DNA. But we know that electromagnetic waves have memory, and that's what light is, electromagnetic waves. So really, all we have to look at is how an optical quantum computer could process qubits. Just a brief outline of this theory is given here. If you want to know more about it, you will have to read my book, The Spiritual Genome. There are a few things you must know about the electrons in DNA molecules. The DNA bases are made up of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen atoms. Hunt's rule states that when these atoms are not bonded into a molecule, the valence electrons, that is the electrons in their outer shell, will individually occupy a separate orbital if they are not already paired with another electron. You see there the outer shells for nitrogen and oxygen. In nitrogen there are three unpaired electrons and they each occupy a different orbital and all three electrons are spin up. That's the arrows pointing up. For oxygen there are two unpaired electrons and they each occupy a separate orbital and both those electrons are spin up. So when nitrogen and oxygen bond in a DNA molecule, some of those electrons will have to flip their spin to spin down so that the two electrons can occupy the one orbital. This is what a carbon and hydrogen bond looks like. The red spheres are hydrogen atoms and the yellow part is two carbon atoms. You can see the arrows up and down in pairs, which means that some of those valence electrons have had to flip in order to pair off in those orbitals. This is due to the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that no two electrons can have the same quantum number. If two electrons in an orbital were both spin up, then they would have the same quantum number, and this is forbidden. Now these electrons are a moving electric charge, and if they flip their magnetic spin, it means that they have reversed the direction of their charge. And the thing about electricity is that it has memory. This is what memristors are about, which are currently being developed. These electrons remember whether they have flipped or not. So now we come to Fritz Albert Popp. In 1970, he made the discovery that DNA absorbs and emits light. In fact, what he found was that DNA stores light. This stored light is released as very weak, extremely coherent biophotons. These photons have been likened to the conductor of an orchestra who directs the individual instruments with his baton. They switch on the body's processes and at different frequencies they perform different functions. You can see there a couple of images of the DNA emitting light. The top one actually shows the DNA like optic fiber emitting data. This phenomenon is well known and many people have speculated about its physical and spiritual significance. So now we come to quantum computing. The DNA is actually an optical quantum computer. When an atom absorbs light, the electrons jump to a higher energy level, and when it emits light, they jump back down to their ground state. What you see here is the diffraction pattern of X-rays beamed through a DNA molecule. The dark patches are caused by destructive interference that actually cancels out the wave. The pattern would be infinitely more complex than that when the atoms in the DNA are spontaneously emitting light, but the principle is the same. And the Pauli exclusion principle only applies to electrons in the ground state. So it's no longer possible to state with certainty that all the electrons in the DNA molecule are uniformly paired in the spin states one up and one down. All the electrons in the DNA molecule only have probabilities of being spin up and spin down, and these probabilities will depend on a myriad of factors. One such factor will be whether it was spin up or spin down in its previous ground state, and indeed all its previous ground states. The electron is now in a superposition of an infinite number of states, and this is what is known as a qubit in quantum computing. I'm going to show you a very simple quantum computing operation. The x qubit you see there is the qubit that represents the number 5, and the y qubit represents 0. Now we have a qubit that contains both the input number x and the function for the computer to perform. This is simply a y equals function x operation. Finally, we see what the y equals function x operation would look like digitally. Quantum computers do parallel processing. This means that instead of working through a problem in a linear or deterministic way, they throw all possible answers up at once as qubits, and they select only one answer because it is the most probable. The X register you see there consists of the qubits for the numbers from 0 to 7, which can be expressed in binary code by 3 bits. And the wave function psi is the superposition of the eight parallel processing tasks that the quantum computer will perform simply by selecting the most probable state. 
That wave function, psi, can be represented as a series of vectors. This is a vector diagram for the superpositional state. You see those small arrows? They are actually vectors, and the angle between the direction of the vector and the horizontal line is the phase of the complex amplitude. The complex amplitudes of all the superpositional states of the wave function psi are all zero to start with. As you can see, the angle of the vector to the horizontal is zero for all superposition states. This is the transformation diagram which represents the instantaneous answer. Each one of those vectors represent the probability amplitudes for the correct answer. In other words, beams of light travelling in all those directions would constructively and destructively interfere with each other and only one wave function will survive. The wave function that survives is at the top and its schematic representation is below. You will see from the vector diagram that the qubits 0 and 4 have survived and we started out with the parallel processing of 8 qubits. 8 divided by 0 is an impossible answer so the correct result is 8 divided by 4 equals 2. This is actually Shaw's algorithm for finding the period of a function and 2 is indeed the correct answer. The quantum processing in the DNA would involve registers with an infinite string of qubits and the light emitted by each atom would actually be diffracting off an indefinite number of atoms. So the phase angles, the probability amplitudes, would be too complex to even comprehend. But no matter how complex the diffraction patterns become, the processing is simply the constructive and destructive interference of light, which will be completed at the speed of light. The most complex processing task you could ever imagine will be completed as quickly as the task of adding 1 plus 1 equals 2. So now we have seen how the DNA could store data in a binary code using electrons that have flipped or not flipped their magnetic spin. We have also seen that when the DNA absorbs light, the electrons jump to higher energy levels where there are only probabilities of them being spin up or spin down. And finally, we have seen that when the DNA emits light, these probabilities cancel each other out so that the light that is emitted is in the nature of an answer to a processing task. This is optical quantum computing.